This Argos GCSE question had a lot of 16 year olds crying. Let's make sure we know how to do it, innit? So we got this triangle, uh, we have x, y, they're the angles, we have b centimeters, c centimeters. It's already given me sign rule vibes. It says c is 11.5 correct to 1 dp. They don't need to put centimeters here because that's indicated on the diagram. x is 80 correct to the nearest whole number. So again, they don't need to say degrees because the degree is on the x. Then we have y is 75. Calculate the upper bound for b. Okay, calculate the biggest number this value could be based on the error, error, the error of these values. Yeah, because what does it mean that c is 11.5 correct to 1 dp? Meaning, it means that c has been rounded to one decimal place. It could have been 11.49, it could have been 11.48, but Whoever did this calculation just rounded all the values. So all of these have errors. And obviously these errors will create a range of values for all of these. Okay? And they're saying, look, when you take in all, that all into account, the fact that all of these values have been rounded, what is the biggest possible value this could be? Okay? Well, the first thing we should always do to make sure we secure some marks is to write down what the biggest and smallest values of all of these could be. Okay? So, C is 11.5, correct to one decimal place. Okay, C is 11.5, correct to one decimal place. So, we're going to calculate the upper bound, the UB, and the LB. Now, what's the easiest way to just find very quickly the upper and lower bound? Write 5 as 50 and add in minus 5. So, it'll be 11.55. And then 11.45. Okay, so 11.45 is the smallest possible number, which would still round to 11.5. Now, 11.55 is the largest number, but obviously it can't equal 11.55 because that actually rounds to 11.6. So if we were to write it as an inequality, we wouldn't have it equal to this. But you can't write 11.49999999, etc. And if you write recurring, that still is 11.5. Five. Okay. What about this x is 80 correct to the nearest whole? So x is 80 to the nearest whole. What's my ub and my lb? Now we can actually apply the same concept here. You can write 80 as 0 0.0. And then to this 0, you just add and minus 5. Okay. So it'll be 80.5 as your upper. Now your lower, obviously if you minus... 5 from here, you're going to go down into 79, 79.5. Now, how do you know if you've even got these correct? Nearest whole, nearest whole means the nearest one. We're talking about the unit, so the nearest one. The difference between your error or the difference between these upper and low bounds should be the value of your error. And you can see the difference here is 1. Okay? And the same thing for the 75. So y is 75. Again, you can think of it as 0 0.0, so your upper bound 75.5, and your lower bound is going to be, so when you go down, you can think of that as 50 becomes what? It would be uh, 74 point five. no, yeah, 74.5, I'm bugging. Ignore my bugging out for a second. It still works, mate, when you add in minus 5, so there's the difference, you can see it is 1. Now, obviously, you're not going to get credited for each individual one of these, okay? But that's not the point. Yeah, we're going to get some marks, maybe one mark, yeah, for just showing one of these. But it's all about how do we use these now, okay? So, we now need to go back to here and think, okay, how would I have worked out this value of B, okay? Well, it's a non-right-angled triangle, so I'm thinking about either the sine rule or the cosine rule. Now, if I'm going to use the sine rule, that B... I need the opposite angle. I actually need this angle. I'm going to call it theta. Now, how do I even work out theta? They've given me x and y, so I'm going to have to do angles in a triangle. So theta is going to be 180 degrees minus x and y. So we're going to minus x degrees, and we're going to minus y degrees. And then we're going to do the sine rule. Okay, now what is the sine rule? The sine rule says, if we're going to work out the value of B, it says that 
If you take this length and you divide it by sine of the opposite angle, that ratio is maintained no matter how you look at the triangle. So y and c, x and whatever that length is, they haven't given it to us. So they're saying b divided by sine of this angle, b divided by sine of the angle theta is the same as doing c divided by sine of y. c divided by sine of y degrees. You don't really need a degrees there if you don't want. So I'm going to rearrange for b. This is b divided by sine of angle. Yeah, so to rearrange, I'm going to multiply through by sine of theta. Yeah, I'm going to times through by that. So I'm going to get b is c over sine y degrees times sine of the angle theta. Okay, now we want b to be as large as possible. Okay, so I want b to be big. I want it to be the upper bound. We're going to have to go term by term and decide, do we want these unknowns to be big or small? Okay, so if you want b to be large, do you want to do big divided by big, big divided by small, small divided by big, or small divided by small? Well, to keep an overall fraction big, yeah, as large as possible, you want to start off with a big value and divide by a small value. Now, why is that? Just to give you a real life example that probably would never happen, you win the lottery, okay? But you bought a ticket for the lottery, yeah, and all you and your mates all put in some money to buy this lottery ticket that actually won, okay? Which means you guys are all gonna split up your money, right, between you and your mates. The question you have to ask yourself is, if you wanna keep as much money as possible, would you rather have more mates participating towards paying for the lottery ticket or less mates? The answer, you should say, is less mates. The less people that contributed to that lottery ticket, it will increase the amount of money you get to keep. So, you need lots of money and less people to divide it amongst, okay? So, we want C to be the upper bound and we want this overall thing to be small. Okay, now we need to be careful here. What students do is they just write y lower bound. Okay, they want this degree, this angle to be as small as possible. But it doesn't quite work like that when we have sine and, well, sine, cos, or tan. All right, so let's just make sure that it is the lower bound of y. You need to know what the graph of sine even looks like. It looks like this, all right, where this is zero and this is 90 degrees. Now, what do we say? We said the angle Y here is 75, which is over here. Okay, so we have 75, I'm just gonna get rid of this 90. So we have 75 degrees. So it gives you this value over there. Now remember, we wanna keep this small, okay? We wanna go small. Remember what the upper and lower bound was, 74.5, 75.5. Now, which one of those is gonna give me the smallest Y value? This one or this one? Well, 74.5 gives me this, and 75.5 gives me this. So clearly we want 74.5. So we actually want the lower bound here. It still works, but you need to make sure you understand why, because with the cosine graph, it's actually the other way around. If this said cos of y, and you wanted the lower value, you actually need to take the upper bound of the angle, okay? So we've established that. What about this? Sine of the angle. Yeah, if you want to multiply and you want to keep the overall thing large, do you want to multiply by a big number or a small number? Well, if you're trying to keep things large, you definitely want the biggest value of this. Okay, now following that same principle, if you're on the larger value, you need to take the upper bound. Okay, so this we're going to take the upper bound. Okay, cool. So in terms of, where's my rubber? My rubber is under my phone. So let's sub in the values and then I'll type it very quickly on my calculator. So you're gonna get B, upper bound, bub, is C ub, cub, 11.55, divided by sawing of, uh, I don't even know how to say that, Willab, who 
we've got 74.5 times, that's degrees, times sine of alb, which is the, aha, so look, I'm looking for that theta. But I don't have a value of theta in terms of its upper and lower bound. It's actually in terms of x and y. This is what makes this problem even more difficult, is actually this needs to be rewritten in terms of this. But instead of writing it all again, I'm just going to refer to this. So I'm actually going to write uh, theta upper bound, and we're going to look at this instead. OK? We want this to be as large as possible. OK? So if I want that to be big, do you want to do 180 minus big minus big? Or do you want to do 180 minus small minus small? 180 minus big minus small? What are you trying to do here? If you want to keep this overall thing large, yeah, keeping this overall thing large, you want to subtract small values. You want to keep this overall subtraction as large as possible. You're going to minimize these. So these need to be the lower bounds. The lower bounds, okay? So for both of these angles, we're going to take the lower bounds. We're going to take the 79.5. And we're going to take that 74.5. Okay. And now we literally just type all of this in the calculator. So I'm just going to do it super quick. So I have 11.55 divided by sine of 74.5 times sine of, now I'm typing this in, 180 minus this, which is 79.5 minus 74.5. Uh, these are both my lower bounds, I get about 5.25. So to 3SF, I get my bub is about 5.25. And you don't need to put centimeters because it's already attached uh, in the diagram. And that is our answer. And that, guys, is a very tough question in terms of the amount of things you need to think about. Obviously, it's not worth a lot of marks because it would be at the end of the paper. And because most students would get this wrong, they're not going to make it six marks, are they? Because then they'll screw over a whole generation of Argos GCSE students, isn't it? So guys, if you learned something today, hit the like button, subscribe for more mass content like this. And if you're interested in my full GCSE courses, there is a link in the description. I also have a Reddit page if you want to submit questions for me to do, or we can discuss more maths, isn't it? But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Nice.